You're listening to session slash episode 83 of Primordial Harmony, a retelling of that classic elemental evil story in Dungeons and Dragons. My name's Mike. I'm running this, and tonight I'm joined by... Hello, I'm Senna, and I'm playing Delia, the gnome wizard. Hi, I'm Kitties, and I'm playing the gnome bard, Hum. Hello, my name is Miles. I'm playing Tadai Salama. He's a mouse mar seeker. I'm Nix, and I play Vox. Hey, I'm Zeph, and I play Zachary Vitalis, the fire genasi fighter. All right. When we last left, the excavators. After a vague threat from a dying, from the dying bro shark, Delia went to poke around the room near the crevasse that they had just traversed. She peered into an arrow slit on one side, but was struck by a crossbow bolt from the opposite arrow slit. She cried out in pain and surprise, and Tadaius moved in to block the thin window with his shield. Delia, severely nettled, coordinated with Tadaius, and she sent a fireball into that room behind. The scream of a Dwergar, her reward. The party engaged the rest of this group of Dwergar in the room through the actual door, and despite some invisible sneak attacks and an enlarged war pick strikes, the Dwergar were defeated. After they catch their breath, Sunis gives a warning to Zachriel that a piece of her nemesis, Ogermark, was present in the ruins, and that the man that wielded that essence, likely Marlos, was quite dangerous. A memory that they both shared from another time surfaced as well, a dire plea to know their enemy. The party then moves south down a hall and turns a corner toward a door. Vox listened in and heard what she thought was a monster slurking about. Instead, <clears throat> the excavators found an Earth Genasi man, a user of earth and water magic. His name, Mirage. Literally. The self-titled Mud Sorcerer seemed happy to entertain the party and spoke with them for a time. The excavators attempted to dissuade him from the Earth Cult. Earth Cult. Mirage made it clear that he would not yield and he would not allow the party to slay his leader. The conversation grew tense, Mirage preparing to defend himself as Hum spoke about just killing him. Finally, Vox shot first, prepared. Mirage summoned Mud Elementals out from the pit before him. The party got several good hits on him, but he cast Erupting Earth and then sunk into the mud, leaving the party to deal with the mud elementals. After a slog of a battle, the party retreated to the room with the Dwergar to rest. However, on the way they spotted down the western hall some sort of small storm cloud that crackled with lightning. They'd leave it alone for the time being. After their rest, Hum took out er took a look out the arrow slit and found a trail of footprints leading out from the mud pit for a few steps before fading. Mirage, perhaps? With that troubling them, the party explored another adjacent room, finding a small barrack and killing several cultists in their beds. One of them, a burrow shark without his mount, bragging to a lower-ranked cultist about the merits of a soft hand and tone with bullets. Tadaius didn't allow for more details before he kicked off combat. Knowing he was soon to perish, the burrow shark ordered a cultist to warn Yarsha, but Vox took them out before they could leave the room. Exiting the barrack, the party once again saw that strange localized storm cloud. Delia and Tadaius intuited that there was some sort of moat of elemental energy, similar to the portals between cult lairs. Unwilling to potentially get shocked for now, the party moves to explore further south from the gate hall. And there we return, the 18th of Kythron, in the depths of the Earth Cult's lair. Let me bring you there. Did you say the 18th of Kythron? 28th. 28th, okay. Alright. <clears throat> so. Oh boy, it's got a load. But, uh, are you guys still moving away from that storm thingy? I think so. All right. Well, uh, you have your tokens. So we were going to head south, the path we kind of like, you know, 180 from.
we were headed that way. All right. You guys make your way back. The um, corpse of the bullet and kobolds and burrow shark still laying about. Uh, <clears throat> Tadias, make a insight check. Insight, let's see. Vox can too. Might not be using the right skill here, but it's pretty close. <laughs> yes, the short sword. Vox just pulls out her short sword, looks at it. <laughs> That's not all the insight she needs. Vox, you notice that it looks like the corpse of the boule was pushed like just a little bit to uh, towards your uh, left. As if somebody might have come through here at some time before. And you're only noticing it, and only really noticing it now. Did, did one of you guys move that bullet? No. Well, have a look at it. Doesn't it look like it moved? It's dead. I'm pretty sure it is dead. I don't. I don't think that's what she means, guys. I think she thinks that someone may have pushed it to the side. What if it's Mirage? I'm gonna kind of move over and try to inspect the area, see if there's any foot tracks or prints. Something that would lead me to believe something came through here. Uh, survival. That would be it. <laughs> Other than. The bullets, like, form, like, maybe pushed a little bit. Uh, you don't really notice much else. I don't see anything. Maybe it's just because it's dead and it shifted a little bit from the gases and the bomb. You're saying it had a big fart? I think so. Hmm. Well, I don't want to stay around for no, no number two, so... Oh, not number two. It was just gas. Right. Well, which way would you like to head? We've got a couple of choices. Well, we've got the cracks in the back over there that um, we think might be taking us somewhere else where we could go. Well, we don't want to go somewhere else before we clear the place, right? So let's Maybe. clear the place. Oh, Delia's tokens under Nathan. Okay. Yes. Tadias, wouldn't this uh, kind of fit your wheelhouse? Uh, where do you think they would hold up in a place like this? Is there a check I can make for like infrastructure of random old buildings? Mm. Like history or something? Well, let's see. You've seen a lot of this place. So, uh, <clears throat> and, and your archaeologist has already, like, informed you, hold on, Vox, uh, uh, before you continue moving. Um, <clears throat> let me think, uh, yeah, okay, so you've seen a bunch of this place, and you know that it's Dwarven in make because of your archaeology. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and roll a history check. So given what you've seen here, uh, this uh, seems to be, let me actually make sure I have that right. So what, from what you've seen, you intuit that this was once um, the, a, a, or once served as a gate, a fortified gate complex for whatever other um, dwarven uh, infrastructure or, or just structures in general might lie beyond. Given the arrow slit room, this sort of gatehouse that you're in right now. Well, 
I think um, this building isn't as important and we're probably going to find more as we keep going. Best I can say is the defenses are only going to get crazier as we get further in. Hmm. I'll start following after Vox. All right. Yeah, you still see the uh, abandoned mud pit, a seemingly abandoned mud pit room. Do do do. Vox, you're there. Give me a second, Vox. Before you do anything crazy. Um, do, do, do. <clears throat> all right, go ahead and keep moving, you dudes. Are you all burst out like that? I'm just gonna make it easy and say where my token is. That yeah, I'm there. All right. Well, keep keep. Uh, I haven't called initiative or anything, so feel free to keep moving. Well, I'm I'm stopping here just to take a listen. Okay. We well, actually, corner. I love that. So you're taking a listen, and Tadius hears this too, and to some degree, uh, the other three in the back there. Um, So as you sort of cross that threshold, uh, you hear... Oops. I wanted to copy, not cut. You hear that coming from the room. Oh, that sounds gross. I'm not going to continue playing it because I don't want to squick out. Thank you. Uh, everybody. But that, <laughs> just, not very that is continuous as you advance. Um, <clears throat> so I can read some of this. Sometime, so you, you can see, like, from your perspective. Uh, oh, okay, good. Okay. So Tadias and, and Vox see this. So I'll just read out the little flavor here. Um, Oh, interesting. Okay. So, uh, some time ago, a seismic, a seismic event must have devastated this great hall. You see a deep chasm splitting the chamber in two, leaving a wide gap between the room's northern and southern halves. Freestanding pillars of rock to the east create natural stepping stones across the chasm. You can just barely make out. They're like, they start like right here. Um, the chasm, uh, well, you can't really see much more of the chasm. You'll have to continue. You, although you do see a couple of these stone pillars that rise out of the ground. So, Vox. So, I'll keep reading. Six, stew, blah, blah, blah. Six huge stone pillars stand in this chamber, and the ceiling here is almost 50 feet high. At the end of the room, you see a torch burning, and illuminated underneath is a burrow shark on his mount, and Mirage speaking to him. They don't seem to notice you. It's gonna back up quietly. I'll let the others I'm gonna let the others know what I just saw. Do you think you could hit them from here? I could hit one. Well, if we can deal with Mirage, we won't have much of a problem like Well, if that's your plan, we should be ready for the Burrow Shark to leap up here. Yes, but we can deal with that pretty easily. So is that the is that the plan? That's my suggestion. You're trained for this, right? 
I feel like from he a hit distance. really hard. Okay, but I'm gonna stand back here so I don't, you know, draw attention. I miss Elyria right now. Tense. Just gonna pick my. I'm gonna pick like my head around. Okay. You can see them just kind of like gesticulating and talking. You can't really hear what they're saying. The uh, burrow shark is just kind of, sort of sitting up at attention, like sort of at a, like an at attention kind of pose, holding on to uh, his bullet. And then uh, you see Mirage gesture over. So right now you guys are like in darkness, except for Zachariel, um, who you said you've moved back. So um, wait, guys. Could you hit I him saw... with your sharp bow? I was going to do that, but I I just saw one of those Sam in the, back in the room. You know, there was a sand portal. Oh, the mud pit? So I'm wondering if they're going to jump in there and maybe portal their way behind. I don't know it's smart if we let them get it behind us. Because we don't know what's in front of us. Uh, I guess let's just watch our backs. So we're gonna stand here and wait for them to do something. Oh, I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna shoot. If everybody's agreed to that. I think I it's a good idea no if choice. we can catch them by surprise. Okay, I draw my short bow. As you draw your short bow. Oh, before oh. I... <laughs> so I'm getting ready, and then I'm going to step out and shoot. Okay. So as you knock your arrow, and you prepare to step out, you uh, <clears throat> make a perception check. Over here, oops, I'm the jam layer. Over here, you see what looks like a small, like, pile of mud slumped up against the wall. And as you step out, it seems to start glowing. Yeah! This creature that looks like a fiend appears as this sort of rock, this crystal that is uh, emitting light sort of pops out of its chest. You can still take your shot, but Mirage and the Burrow Shark both turn sharply. Roll initiative. I can do, I can still do my shot. You can still do your shot. You're not going to get, uh, you're not going to get surprised, but you will be able to take your shot. I think you still get advantage and stuff, but you, you won't be, yeah. What the fuck? Oh, there it is. Sorry, I still get advantage? You still get I'm advantage, because he hasn't acted yet. And, just not my um, sneak attack, right? Uh, No, you will get sneak attack, but you won't. it won't be an auto crit. That's the, that's the rub, I'm pretty sure. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, the assassinate. So that, that was on Barrage. I figured. Uh, give me a second. Create and see what the fuck. Oh shit, okay. Da -da -da. 
da. Box with the high initiative. All right. Uh, so you hit. Go ahead and roll. Nine piercing. All right. Uh, go, go, add your sneak attack to that. Math is hard. Mm, 26. Okay. And it's your turn again as he turns um, and he says, uh, he quickly bellows out, you know what to do! And the burrow shark looks like he's, he like goes, yeah! And I'll, I'll do that on his turn. Vox, it's your turn now for reals. Okay, uh, I, I see this, so I'm just gonna attack that. Okay. Begin with the shark bow. All right. That's, Oops, sorry. Uh, I mean, 27 hits. Go ahead and roll. You don't have sneak attack, though. Or actually, you do, because uh, it hasn't acted yet, so go ahead and use it again. 7 plus... 22. All right. I'm gonna back up. The little um, crystal that was producing the light kind of falls to the floor in front of this method. Um, and it looks all messed up. Hum, it's your turn. So Hum's going to move forward, and all she can see is this guy here. Why can't I see anybody else? Um, I don't know. It might be because so there's... I'm going to go ahead. There, let me, uh, there's a giant pillar in front of you. This is a big stone pillar. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So all I can see is this guy here, so I'm going to shoot my crossbow at him. Alrighty. Tonk. Bolt shower? I hit the wrong one. Oh, okay. Alright, that hits. Roll a damage for four piercing. That seems weird. That does seem but strange. But there you go. It's three plus dex. Oh yeah, it's a plus two. Uh, and then the four piercing. Huh. Well, that's what happens when you run, <laughs> when you roll a one. Yup. Alrighty. <clears throat> uh, the method looks seriously messed up. Its mud is just kind of plorping off of itself. Uh, and it's its turn. She's also going to take a step aside so people can come out the door there. Alrighty. Well, the mud method will come over here and uh, will do one last thing as it... Uh, I need... To die, so I need you to make a deck save, friend. Alright. Oh no. So it breathes mud all over you. And you are restrained for a minute as this mud is just kind of blech all over you and you're having trouble just shaking it off. Am I exfoliated as well? Uh you're you're <laughs> no, you're, you're infoliated. I don't know if that actually means anything, so. All right. In response to Mirage, um, <clears throat> you hear the burrow shark bellow out. You hear the burrow shark bellow out. Uh, he says, he bellows out, Kill the gnomes first, right! And then he smacks a bu bullet with his fist, and he says, Go, Juno! Jump and bite! And the oh. burrow shark makes this pleased ah! sound, and it starts charging over. Uh, let me see here. Monster speed? Oh yeah, okay. And then it's going to just take a massive leap across the chasm. And uh, that's his turn as he stares down a strangled Tadias. Mirage is going to move over here. And, uh. Actually, that's not what he does. He is going to. First, you see him walk over to his mud. little mud pit here. And he kind of sticks his hand into it, and he's looking over his shoulder as he does it. 
and um, Delia and Zachriel, you find yourselves separated from the rest of your group with a barrier of this sort of oozy mud. Mirage then will go into his little mud pit here and sink into it. Tadias, it's your turn. You're covered in mud. Excellent. Is there some check I can make to bust out of this mud? Uh, well, the rule says you make the deck save again at the end of your turn, but if you want to spend an action to do that, you may. Yeah, I probably just want to get the mud off of me, so... Uh, I would just action. say uh, a, either a dex or strength check. I can see an argument for either. Alright, that's enough. And you just kind of like... Sh you spin around and just shake it off. And uh, you're okay. free now. Has I pull my like feet out of the mud pile and I kick it a little bit and I'm going to bonus action to get the jets on and just kind of like zip behind this guy. Alright. The, the air kind of blows out and kind of like makes ripples along the method. Uh, what's Nathan doing? I'm telling Nathan to go into the other room, the, the mud pit room, and give us a squawk if somebody comes up through there. All right. What is Delia going to do? This mud wall in front of me is magical, right? Can uh, I tell that? You can tell that it was created with magic um, at, at first glance, uh, but you have to spend a little bit of time investigating it in order to tell if it's all magical or if they, he just magically conjured some mud that's just there now. And that would probably be an arcana check if you wanted to discern it for real. Okay, I'm gonna try because I don't want to. I don't want to use dispel magic if it is if it's not gonna do anything. Sure. Roll arcana. All right. Uh, you know that um, this sort of the way this is is that there is magic that's sort of holding it in place. You could enter it. It would take you a long time to move your way through it to the other side. But if you were to somehow get rid of this force field thingy that's holding the mud up, um, it would just sort of collapse. Okay. So Delia spends her time doing that. Zachariel, what are you doing? Uh... You can try and get through it, Zachariel, but I I need a second to dispel the magic holding the mud up. Well, that would leave you vulnerable, so I will stay here. I'm going to block her body with my body. Alrighty. Back at the top, it's Vox. I take the dodge action. You got it. I'm going to come up to him and but stab him with my short sword. Okay. Uh, that kills it. It had one HP left. Uh, and then it explodes in a burst of sticky mud. I need you and Tadias to make dex saves. Yeah. <laughs> Vox, I you... Oh, I... oh, well, 11 is enough. So, Vox, you dodge this mud as it explodes. You'll be able to, like, duck. To Dias, you get covered in it again, and you are restrained until the end of your next turn. The fuck? <laughs> I'm having fun. It's Mom's, it's Hum's turn, unless uh, Vox was going to do anything else. I love it. It's the gnome's turn. Go ahead. Are y'all done? I believe... Actually, I'm gonna just come over here. Okay. Alrighty. Well, it's the burrow shark's turn. Oh, sorry, it's Hum's turn. Oh, it's My the bad. gnome's turn. It's the gnome's turn. She's gonna come here, and she's going to load her bolt shower with... Um... By, by the way, I would say that 
just to get this into your head, between encounters, it's completely reasonable for Hum to have loaded it up completely with ten arrows. That was sort of a design intent. And it is, because right. she can. Hell and yeah. she is going to take that ten shots with the spell slot and really try to hit these guys. Really try to just spray and pray, baby. Oh, God. Oh, wait, I just need to shoot. I don't know why I keep hitting. Uh, so let's see. So they're going to have to roll some saves. Uh, bullet. Going to be a... Eh. Uh, no. And then, uh, made a good effort, though. Uh, and then the bro shark. Eh. All right, they both fail. And they both take 32 piercing damage as you light them up with these arrows as they just kind of... It's just one really loud twang, and uh, the arrows just, or the bolts just soar through the air. The bullet's head is just like a And the pincushion. psychic blades come towards them too. Which one? Psychic blades. No, no, which you can oh, only- Oh, towards yeah. the burrow shark. Alrighty, so 32, and then minus another 14. I am and then 32 for the bullet. <clears throat> and then she's gonna take a step back to here because they said get the gnomes first. I, she heard that. Oh, she heard that. He was not subtle about it. All right. The burrow shark angrily like takes his hand or he takes a spear and he uses the haft of it to like try to brush away the bolts sticking out of his skin or sticking out of like the the points the joints in his armor and he angrily uh growls and uh he just smacks the hide of the bullet again and he says uh he says <clears throat> Juno don't let them get to you eat her and then uh the bullet charges and uh, he can't, I don't think he can fit in here. He can fit with squeezing, but he's already used, let's see, 25 feet. Squeezing takes half movement. Yeah, he can get in there. So the, he gets in here with the bullet, and uh, he is going to just command the bullets to have at hum, and he hops off. And then he takes his spear, and he's going to lay into Tadias, his restrained self. I um, need to roll. I need to roll an issue for the bullet. Because he left his mount. No. Ah, oh, yes. Yeah. Sweet, sweet advantage. Oh yeah, he's gonna he's gonna get at you. Uh, let's see. Where's the where's your thing, buddy? There's advantage. And uh, he's just being a little cocky, so he's just gonna do like some one-handed strikes as he sees Tadias covered in mud. So one. 21, 5 piercing. 24, 7 piercing. Take 3 of them. 9 piercing. And that's his turn. Uh, meanwhile, Zachariel and... Uh, <coughs> Delia uh, are anticipating the arrival. But uh, for now, nothing happens. Tadias. I'm stuck, so I'm just gonna stab. All right, <laughs> disadvantage stabs. That. Cut. I think I'm gonna go for the dude, because he's the one that's. The who? <laughs> the man. The okay. man on the bullet. The man who was riding the bullet, who's no longer riding the bullet. Oh, yeah. Down I'll with talk about the it. man. Down with the man. I was kind of imagining like a strange love situation where I'm trying to stat. Nah, alright, let's go. <laughs> uh, 14. We got. Hit! 18 and a sad cat. 18 and a sad cat, that hits. That damage. Oh. He growls in pain and the bullet kind of like ah, looks around. And. Bonus action. Bonus I'm action. going to reach into my bag under the mud and I'm going to try to spill some of those little ball bearings onto this dude's square. All right. That's, I, I guess you can I usually do have things to do. Yeah. <laughs> I guess you can do that. Is there any, there's nothing in restraint saying that. Yeah. Okay. So you've kind of like just 
as the mud's kind of sopping off, you reach... Okay, sure, yeah. Um, yeah, okay. So... I forget if it's a 5-foot square or if it's a 10-foot square. I'm looking at a real quick. 10-foot square. So, I'll just draw it for you. I'm just going to kind of cover them. No, don't do not do it. Eh. Template. Oh, perfect. Just can't back. All right. So, remind me how that works on his turn, I guess. So, how it works is, as an action, I spill this, but because I have a dude right, that right. does the bonus action version, I do it. A creature moving across the covered area must succeed a DC 10 dexterity saving throw or fall prone, but they can move at half speed in the area, and they don't have to make the save. So, if they, like, respect the balls, they go half as fast and don't get damaged or don't fall over. Is there anything about if they start their turn in it? No, it's not like that. It's a very generic item. Okay, well, neither of them are going to move, unfortunately. But now you're no longer restrained, so there you go. Uh, he's still watching. I'm gonna is I'm gonna have him fly over the the pit. Okay. Like up at the top of the ceiling, so that nothing like snatches him. Okay. Is there any, like, weird bubbling or anything going on? Not that he can see. Okay. All right. Well, the bullet follows its command. And it tries to snap at, uh, <clears throat> hum. Eleven. Does that hit? Misses. Please describe to me how that misses, because that's... Very lucky. <laughs> um, Hum, as he comes at her with his mouth, kind of like runs underneath him, just under his jaw. <laughs> yeah. So that he misses. And you see he kind of gets confused and like doesn't slip and fall, but like a ball bearing lands under the, one of the feet of this thing and just kind of like... Bah! Bah! All right, that's the bullet's turn as it tries to like look under its look under its face for hum delia uh i'm going to cast a spell magic on the the wall okay the mud wall the mud wall uh starts to collapse and it just kind of and now that whole area while you're accessible to it it's now rough terrain okay all right. And I'm going to use my bonus action to... Can I tap my staff on the wall instead of the mud? Yes, you can. <laughs> okay. And I'll cast Blade Ward. All righty. Special Blade Ward. That and then do a raspberry at the bullet. Yeah! Zachariel. All right. Now hear me out. Okay. Can I make a leap across and attempt to mount the bullet? Can you make a leap across and attempt to mount the bullet? Uh, what's your leap? Okay, well, you're gonna have to like back up and then go again in order to make that happen. Which I will action search for this if I need to. You might have to. Just let me let me let me see here. So uh, you like ten, and then you want to go back another twenty, then jump. Yeah, you might have to action surge unless you, if you want to do more than spend an action to dash. Yeah, no, because I want to grapple it and then attack it from oh, you the top just want to head. Oh, you just want to grapple it? Yeah, I want to get on top of it and start hitting it in the back of the head with the shovel. Uh, no, yeah, you'd have to do thirty-five feet to like to properly mount it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you'd have to action surge. Yeah, but there's a like. There's a long jump mechanic. But, oh, uh, not to get into the rules too much, but uh, the long jump mechanic does work, but the thing is, you still have to spend movement of that jump. So, like, you can't run 30 feet and then jump and say it's all one movement. Does that make sense? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I don't know. Let me, uh, uh, you know what? Actually, what? this is the perfect time for a check. So, if you can succeed, let me think. You want to jump jump a long distance? Okay. Uh, DC 17 Athletics to do it without having to spend an action surge. Alright, you do it. 
All right. Now I'm going to attack. I, I'm going to jam the teeth of the uh, the shovel. I guess, like, I don't really know the anatomy of a bullet very well. Nah, I don't think you do. I'm just going to ram it into the... Yeah. That is a hit. As it cries out. Seven. That also hits for 11. The total is 18. All right. And the bullet is just like sh shrieking out. And uh, the bear. The, I'm going to grin at the barrel shark. Yeah, the barrel shark looks at you angrily. Uh, hum, it's your turn as you sort of like see. You, you sort of. I want to narrate this. You, you, As you're sort of underneath the bullet, it starts to come down on you and you're like oh fuck and you back up a bit and you you get out from underneath the bur or get you get out from underneath the bullet and you see Zachriel with his spade in the head of this creature what do you do um i laugh because <laughs> i see Zachriel on top of it and know that i am protected and then i am going to send um, two magic missiles or two charges of magic missiles at him the the bullet alright and I'm going to viciously mock him man you keep rolling fours on your magic missiles it's uh, great isn't it, it it's super good so two charges is level two so that's uh, four darts so 20 damage okay and then I'm going to viciously mock him alrighty Portrino. And tell him um, that he's going to die a vicious death by shovel. You should never have picked this. You should never what? Have picked this fight. Ooh, all right. Well, uh, five damage. Okay. The bro shark kind of whimpers a little bit and starts, starts trying to shake Zachary Alaf. I'll describe that later. Vox. I'm gonna go around. And get this guy in the back. The bro shark? Alright. <laughs> so that's kind of surprised. Uh, he's not. He, he, he can he won't be surprised but you I don't really nah I can't really grant you advantage because he's still well honestly that is pretty he, he, is, he is pretty distracted yeah okay you have advantage that's a hit Nine, and then go ahead and roll your sneak, sneak snack. Uh, okay. Oh god, that was so hard, you guys. Twenty-three. He is. You just like Tadius. You see the blade come through his like his left flank, and he's just like ah. And he. I whisper in his ears, like, "Don't touch my friends." And the bullet kind of whimpers out and tries, keeps moving around. Anything else, Vox? No, I'll stay here. All right. Well, the burrow shark is going to do a couple of things. He is going to, with his spear, he turns to Vox and tries to attack her. Uh, he does not have advantage on her. Step eight. Nope. He tries again for 19. That one hits. For 10 piercing. And then... He looks, he knows he's bested, he looks through the legs of the bullet, and he tries this maneuver where he underhand throws his spear at Hum. And we'll see if he does it. Oh! Uh, that, wasn't, that wasn't much of a crit, though. Six damage. As it sort of skitters on the ground and, like, it catches, like, the grout of the, the tile and just, like, picks up and... Hum barely knocks it away before it can, like, do a nasty little cut. And that's it. That's it for him. 
you guys hear louder and louder skittering, and coming up from the chasm is an ankeg. And uh, the ankeg sort of looks around, assesses what's going on, and then you just hear it go, and it just starts moving towards um, Vox. And let's see here. What's your speed again, bud? 30 feet? Okay. Can it get to Vox? Oh, it sure can. So it gets up to here and it's gonna try to bite her, thinking your food. 16 does not hit, it was rolling to the GM, and that's its turn. Uh, eh. Tadias. Hmm. How beat up does the bullet look immediately, just on first glance? Uh, pretty beat up. It's it, it's moving sl bleh, it's moving sluggishly. All right, I guess focus fire. I'm just gonna try to cut him off with the res. All right. Yeah. That's a hit. Uh, Twenty six. You're not disadvantaged anymore. Yeah, I know. I uh, forgot to take it off. Ten. Okay. And one more. That hits. All right. As guys, is that girl's opened up a witness? Is well, still alive? Well, uh, let me narrate. As you're slashing into this thing, as this thing's trying to knock Zachariel off, it's moving so wildly, it just starts to, like, uh, rotate its body, and its head is just, like, moving toward you, and you just seize your moment to just thrust and meet it head on, and your dagger just, boom, right into the creature's eye. And, uh, it collapses. And, Zachariel, I need you to roll a deck save to not fall prone. In the mud. All right, you don't fall prone in the mud. And the burrow shark whimpers out, "Juno, what's Nathan doing?" He's still watching. Oh, sorry. What's your bonus action today? So I know you want to do something. Oh, mainly I was just going to kind of circle around here and start cutting off this thing. All right. Is that it? Bonus action was if it was still alive, I need to stab it again. It was not alive. So yeah, Nathan, go get him. Alright, sorry about that. Go on. Keep watch, Nathan. Alright, Nathan keeps watch. Bullet dead. Delia, your turn. Uh... Uh, this guy's still alive? Yeah, he's just barely hanging on. I am Can I get him with a firebolt or is there like too much bullet in the way for that? There's a lot of bullet in the way and you are pretty short. So I would say it has probably three quarters cover. You have to like reach your hand up, like extend your hand up and then point toward it probably. So yeah, three th three quarters cover. Climb the bullet? I could try. Roughly. Uh, I guess I'm gonna... I'm gonna try and climb over the, the bullet here. Alright. It's just kind of rough terrain. This... The burrow shark, like... It's moving sluggishly, but then it sees you and its eyes set on you. With its mission. I'll Good. And now you're you're actually within five feet of it, so now you have disadvantage because you have a dude within five feet of you. Okay, guys, how do you feel about uh, some thunder wave? Is that a bad idea, or can you even get him with thunder wave? Oh yeah, you can. Okay. <laughs> I like I start rubbing my hands together and I look over at Zachary and I say they know we're here. Should I just blow all of our cover and Punch it. make a big boom? Fuck it. <laughs> Punch it. All right. Okay, we're doing a big boom. I rub my hands together and then I like put them out at my sides and then I clap really hard. All right. Con saves, I think. Right? Con, can you key the spell for me? Uh, yes. 
Oh, you're okay. upcasting it. Uh, so, uh, con save for the Yankeg. And then con save for the... Uh, that's not gonna matter. So he collapses, and I need... I, oh, yeah, right. Evocation. Uh, he dies. Yankeg takes... 11. <laughs> Alright. Anything else, Delia? As the huge boom echoes through the halls. No, I think we're good. Alright, Zachriel. Alright, I'm gonna uh, use, I guess, difficult terrain to get out of there. Yeah. Get up here and I'll smack this ankh. Okay. Yeah. That is a hit for 12. And that is a... Not a hit. Oh, yeah, that's a hit. Sorry. For 11. And the purple-green Icor just spilling out of it. Yeah, fuck that guy. That's it for me. That's it for you. As you hear more skittering, another Ankeg climbs out of the crevasse. And is like, Food? And uh, it makes its way over to Zachrael and tries to bite him. No. Uh, hum. Okay, so I'm guessing I have super rough terrain all the way through here. You go around. I could. So I think I'm gonna try to go. And I can see this guy. Yep. And so I am going to do my five shot. Um. Alrighty. Uh, dex save for it. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, it passes, but that's enough of these arrows that just one gets a good shot in the eye and it just crumples. And it falls down. Anything else? Uh, I think I'm going to throw inspiration towards Tadias. I'm right. not yet to. Alrighty. Uh, Vox. I'm gonna shimmy my way over here and have a stab at that ink. Alright. Uh, you don't have advantage, but 17 hits. First, that much. Jesus. And then give me that sneak attack. 19. You bury your short sword deep into this creature, and it just creans in pain, and it looks super messed up. To Dias. Me. And, uh, blood vent. That hits. And it, the fire sizzles its icor, and, uh, it dies. <laughs> And uh, gonna... I'll just. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna like turn around and start picking up little ball bearings off the ground. Ah. Yeah, I was just gonna see how many of my crossbow bolts I could um, get back. It's always half. You still hear the skittering. You sort of stand tense for a little while, but Mirage does not reappear. That slippery bastard. I mean, mud slippery. I'm gonna bring Nathan back on over to you. Alrighty. What do you do oh, now? Anything, anything on this dude? Ah, on the burrow shark. Uh, we're gonna say he's got... 25 gold on him. He seemed well paid. Okay, 
I throw that over to Hum. I'm starting to think uh, that these ankeg might just be mindless creatures being disturbed. It's a big possibility. It appeared to have just come right towards us, as if it was just hungry. What do you do? You have this great crevasse ahead of you, but it looks like a little effort you could cross it with these stepping stones here. I don't like heights. Hey, Delia, we're going to need to be careful. We're the target. Yeah, I, I heard that. I'm. Makes me a little worried. Not quite as hearty as some of us here. Um, neither am I. I'm gonna like. I'm gonna send Nathan over. How deep is the crevasse? Okay, well, now that you guys are looking into the crevasse, you see all this. Uh oh. You see crawling at the bottom what looks like uh, adolescent uh, egg eggs and eggs. Just spread about in the in this crevasse and let's see here um as for the crevasse crevice crevasse this long chasm stretches north e west to northeast or sorry northwest to southeast a five foot wide ledge clings to one wall uh that's what uh this is here um lost my place uh then forms into a oh, you can't really see that from here um from the chasm, you can hear those loud skittering noises. The uh, chasm floor is uh, looks like it's about a hundred feet down, and you look up, and the chasm is also up too, and in carved in the wall, and it looks like it's about a hundred feet up. God, I feel dizzy. Hum looks to Tadias and says, what about, what are the chances that uh, the gnomes could get a hitchhike a ride across this crevasse? It might be our best play. And that way I can touch you too. <laughs> he gives her kind of just a quizzical look. I, I will remind our strength big strength guys that um you can definitely uh i am gonna say like without a doubt you can definitely pass these jumps it's definitely within your abilities without without a um can we bring up that sheet check. of how far i can throw gnomes oh god where i don't even know because i ha i have actual metrics for how far i can chuck people thanks to my feet uh f fuck i don't even know where that is did we pin it somewhere? I have no idea. Oh, man. Uh, mm. If we're not following the direct feed, I think the direct feed makes it just like the daggers. Like, as long as Oh, what is it, like 20, 2060, like an improvised weapon? Yeah. <laughs> but do gnomes land on their feet? We can find out. <laughs> can he attach them to his belt of returning? They have to sit there for a while. Like I have, don't like... I have them like sitting there like little babies like attached to me like baby Bjorn. Then I can use gnomes as weapons. I'm not a fan of this idea, guys. We should play it safe. Get on, I'll fly. You're gonna burn your wings. Let them burn my wings. It makes my partners more comfortable. All right. Oh, bring a rope. 
All right, I um, grab whatever rope Zach Rowe gives me. Yeah, I give him my rope. Okay, uh, well, fly both the gnomes over, and I'll just kind of hold tightly on it to you know make it easier for them, I guess. Yeah, it's super simple. Uh, it, there's no risk here, as you cross this without any trouble. I'm pretty sure. I, I know for a fact that. Uh, wait, what is Nox's strength? That's what the rope's for. Oh, the rope, right? Okay. Yeah, and then you just cross with the rope. It's a little. That was very sweet, Tobias. Thank you. You're no good to me in the hole full of pancakes. Let's keep going. You're a good man. Did you, you can see him turn his face. Feeling? Oh, no, I didn't see it. I'll add that, but he's, you see him turn as you say you're a good man, and he gets just a little bit red as he walks away. Mm -hmm. Mike? Yeah? Am I supposed to see that? See what? The... Top left? Mm. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, you see a forge and a person working on it, and you hear clang, clang, on, clang. Right But they don't pay you any mind, as you are pretty far away. 145 feet away. Hey, Tadeus. Yeah. You're a man of science. Some would say. If you remove the moisture from mud, does it become hard? Like, if I was to burn that patch of mud, do you think it would stop him from being able to use it? I think science would determine that this is a hypothesis and you should test it. Okay. I'm going to use uh, burning hands on that patch of mud. Yeah. it And it comes out as fire and you cook it and you see like the the cracks, you know, when you dry mud and you see the cracks, you see that. Hmm. I guess we'll have to see. And then something you sort guess. of before before you do that, Vox, something sort of clicks in your head. I'm back. Uh, you rem you realize that every time you've done that so far, it's come out of steam. But this oh. time when you did it, it was regular old fire. Hey, did you guys see that? See what? My my thing where I shoot the hot steam out of my hands. It just came out as fire. I'm so proud of you. This is very strange. Soon he's Can pipes you do up. it again? Soon he's pipes up in your mind and says, uh, you must be tapping into... The powers you must you must be tapping into the powers you once wield. Sudi thinks I'm tapping into Zaman Rule's power. That could be I'm helpful. A, I'm a god. Mm, this will be very helpful. Strange, I still hurt like a normal person. Delia, you can see uh, down this hallway what looks like a wall of water. Uh, there's a wall of water over here, guys. I'm just going to peek my head around this corner. And you're reminded of uh, that time in the air cult complex in the mountains. This guy, Pierce Peaks, you found a door similar to this one. I think it's one of those things. Oh, great. I'm going to touch it. You touch it. Just, just pinky. It feels like water. Cold? Yes. Really cold? Uh, I mean, about as... Uh, man, I don't know. It, it, it's about as cold as room temperature water. What happens if I put my water skin in it? It fills up. Guys, you should refill your water skins here. I don't know. Do we know if it's going to poison you? 
That is a good question. I'm just saying. If I dump it out, does it like just go on the floor like normal? Yeah, it just goes on the floor like normal. And then you see it kind of, uh, kind of, uh, hmm. no, it just acts like regular water. Most people have probably been walking through it. <laughs> what if it's recycled? It has like burrow shark boogies in it. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> It's Let's got me wondering if it's like a on. pool situation where if you walk through. Oh, my God. You... oh. <laughs> that's more like a petri dish than a water them. Now I can't Seems use this so. water skin. <laughs> you can have some of my water if you need some. Thank you, hon. Good news is for you guys, it's much less hot in here than it was in the fire uh, temple complex thingy. I miss the heat. I don't, it dries my hair out. I don't have the problem. No, well, you sure don't, buddy. I, I mean, like, I feel like your hair's already really dry. Well, okay, listen. <laughs> I, no need to be a, be rude and attack me. <laughs> oh, jeez. Aren't we touchy this afternoon? Yeah, well, I had a giant lizard thing jump on me earlier, so... Clang, clang. Did you want We should go see what that guy's making. Did you want to call that out, Vox? Just looking. Okay. Well, you see, uh, Delia, you can see down that hallway there is a door. A There's pair... some doors over We should go check out these doors. Hey, did we deal with the water thing yet? This could be another means of entrance into there, right? I think we decided the water was gross because burrow sharks have been watching. Mm, right. You we also will totally visit on the way out. You also recall that um, you tried to enter the. This is obvious to the to your characters. You guys tried to make your way through the weird water portal thingy in the air temple, and you found that it's sort of became thicker and thicker, and it wouldn't let you pass. We probably couldn't get through there anyway. Yeah, but didn't Kine say he went through one? But isn't Kine a water genasi? He's not. No, he's not. That's a good point. What if Zachariel, now that he's a god, can go through? Are you saying Kynes a god? No. Well, he's kind of elemental He may I mean, not be a god, but it could be related. I mean, you're here, Zachariel. It's not the buff possibility. Vox, you come to a tunnel that runs north and south. I think you peeked around the corner. Both ends of the tunnel have collapsed, uh, but the west wall has a set of double doors with crude writings painted on them in common. The message on the southmost door reads, Bullet Pen. The north door says, Burrow Sharks or Marlos only! Three exclamation points. No girls will laugh. Right. You know, this may be the worst possible time for me to bring this up, but uh, isn't it kind of weird how my name is Zachriel and I'm a reincarnation of a guy named Zaman Rule? Isn't that weird? Maybe our parents knew. Yeah, my parents. You know, I've never heard of your parents. Never I haven't seen anybody. them in a long time. Perhaps that's something we can discuss over 
No, I don't think we need yeah. to talk about it. Just... Well, no, we definitely I do, think but... that we well, should we focus. Play. I'm with them. Focus. Task at hand. I mean, that door says Marlos, guys. Oh, well, we should go in there. I'm with you. Let's go. And Hum whispers over to Zachariel. I'm not into talking about parents. Who cares about them anyway? Well, mine are dead, so. Do I hear anything? Uh, roll perception. Oh boy, hang on. Um, let's just say if I ever seen mine again, I'd probably be dead. We're gonna need some beer to talk about this. Let's move. Uh, you hear, um, Vox, what sounds like, uh, like crunching, crumbling rocks. Like, <laughs> Sounds like something's eating rocks. I think bullets eat rocks. Really? That doesn't seem right. They come up. Well, I'm just the describing the sound. Who's to say? All you can do is take a look. Are we opening the door? Why don't we send you down again? That's a really good idea. Uh, can I like open the door just slightly to make a crack? You can. You do so. I will do so. You bring your darnik in and uh... hmm, I don't have the... Uh, hmm. What is that what Delio wants? No, no, no. Uh, oh, sorry. You said you don't. I'm like, yeah, okay. All right. I'm thinking. I, I'm just going to get rid of the dynamic lighting because, well, no. Okay. So I'm going to I'm gonna get you Darnix token real quick here. Character token page. Darnix. Copy. Actually, wait. Does he have the right site? No, of course not. Okay. Uh... Uh, controlled by Mile. And, uh, oh, stand by. Advanced. A site. for the delay. All right, at least there's you, darn it. Just as a funny little note, my daughter's cat knocked over her plant into her makeup, and he is now living outside the door, looking very. Knocked her plant into her makeup. Yes, so she uh, had a potted plant over hanging over her makeup. I see. Table. Naughty kitty. Yeah. So, and he went up and knocked the yeah. plant into it. <laughs> All right. So you bring out Udarnik and you let him peek in. Um, oh, wait. Uh, I want the camera to see this, too. There we go. Uh, fuck. All right, hang on. I made it. He's not that big. Um... There we go. Let me describe this room for you. Crumbling masonry lines this room. It looks like it used to be a kitchen or bakery. Huge ancient brick ovens stand in the middle of the chamber, seemingly converted into anchor points, each with heavy iron chains with links as big as a warrior's hand. You see at the back of the room, from Udarnik's perspective, a lone blit who uh, looks like to be looks like it's gnawing on something.
How tall is the ceiling? The ceiling is... My gut's telling me 15 feet, but I'm going to check. Uh, yep, 15 feet. Yeah, I think uh, you aren't going to come back. Okay. I don't, I don't like those dimensions. One bullet in the next room, door on the right. Huh. Well, if you're ready, we can just move in and take it out quickly. Uh, you don't did see that it was chained. Oh, chained bullet in the room. You think it'll attack us? It might try. With no master? No rider? Where are the riders? There is a room to the right. I could not get to it. I didn't want to risk it, Arnak. But we I can... Uh, well, unfortunately, I believe Nathan can be summoned again more easily than mine. He sure can. So he's we... quite a bit bigger, though. As someone yes, uh, who kind of big... knows this spell, I only got to cast it with a scroll. So the second I need to cast it again to get him back, I'll need another scroll. Okay, we can, uh, I'll send Nathan in. Okay. You open the door a little bit more uh, to bring Nathan in. And uh, Nathan is in. The bullet continues to gnaw and whatever. Okay. And we will send Nathan over to the door, I guess? Roll a stealth check. The... Yeah. The bullet starts. Looks over to Nathan's direction. And then uh, it lets out a little ah! and it backs up as much as the chain allows it. And it sort of just sits in the corner of the room. Does anything like come out side of the door? No. He just rolled well in his perception. And he, uh, the bullet continues to just move, keeps just trying to keep as much distance from Nathan as it can. I'm going to have Nathan move up one more and listen at the door. Uh, he hears nothing. Okay, I'm, as Delia, I'm going to say the, the bullet looks like it's scared of Nathan. Of Nathan? I know, right? It's like backed up against the wall. And there's... There's nothing I could hear through Nathan at the at the door that's on. Well, I feel like we're safe going in then if it's scared of Nathan. And it is trained up. Does anybody object? I don't see any other path. Let's open the doors. You open the doors. The bullet notices and it looks at the lot of you and it just kind of and it just stays where it is. Sort of testing the chain, trying to 
pull itself back, but the chain seems to be really strong holding it in place. No, oh, poor thing. Hem walks over and towards it because she's interested and she's a gnome. She's just really cute. Okay. She talks to it softly. It's okay. <laughs> it looks. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> She pulls out a ration. Roll an insight check. Shouldn't have called. I shouldn't have called for a roll. What I should have done is ask you, kitties, what do you remember the bullet riders doing with their bullets? Um, would remember too. Hitting them. And the pleased sounding growl from them. Only to die is let that other guy talk for another moment. They like to be slapped. <laughs> so it's a BDSM. So... <laughs> oh, I was thinking like a car, like you can fit so many babies in this. <laughs> Didn't they hit it in the back of the head or something? Yeah, but who's to say they all like that? I mean, this guy looks pretty scared. You did notice. I wish I knew what they eat. You did also notice as you talked softly, it seemed to get more and more afraid. Didn't they yell at it too? They so were. She comes the over the and burrow trucks are them. very loud. She comes over and she yells a little bit, Hey, Bullet, come here! Right. It kind of just cocks its head looks at you. You heard me. Move it over here. Sort of slowly inches toward... Angrier, come on. huh? Angrier. Come on! Alright. We got things to do. Move it! It gets to here, and then the chain, its chain catches. Hey, I think we could probably ride this guy. That Give him like clappers. One at a time. What did what did Delia say? Give him slappers. What did Zachary say? That sounds like a terrible idea. <laughs> it sounds like a great idea. Could you see gnomes riding in on a bullet? That would be amazing! It's a bullet you haven't trained that you want to take into combat immediately. Mirage would never expect it. I'm just kidding, Zachriel. I'm just seeing that it's not a violent guy. Are you even sure it's a guy? Everything's a guy until it's a girl. Whatever you say, my guy. Um, you know I'm a girl. All right, look. If you want to keep the bullet, we should probably not take it now. I agree. Hey, bullet, you want to come home with us? It kind of uh, lurches. No, I'm angrier. It lurches toward. It, it, well, hold on. It lurches toward you, and it it cocks its head. And then it, like, kind of bows its head a little bit. See, Hum it wants to come up. home with us. Hum walks up as close as she can get and kind of specks it on its side. Uh, with a tongue that feels like it's made of, like, granite, it licks her. It likes me. She smacks it once more and says, we'll be back. And it pulls its chain again. Again. She tosses over the ration before she walks away. <laughs> Chomps it down. And it pulls its chain a little bit more. She yells, stay. Feel you for getting a bullet. This is so exciting. 
Uh, it seems to just keep wanting to move toward you. As you, like, back away from it. I think we should, I think we should take it with us. Do but you Zachary really want says we can't. <laughs> no, it's not the smart move. But it's the power so, move. Yeah, okay, I understand, but hey, if you seem don't, to be... We... Go ahead. You seem to be already forming a connection with this creature. Well, you know, Lucy is just adorable. You've named it. <laughs> Lucy. But it was a guy. Lucy can be a boy. Okay, um... Um, we should it... get I Love Lucy t-shirts. Jesus. <laughs> Absolutely! Um, um, owning listening. a pet is a lot of responsibility. Zachriel! And I don't think when we know there's an incredibly dangerous and strong person here, it is wise to bring your brand new pet to bear against that person. I'm not bringing it right now. I'm leaving it here. Ah, but it, Lucy wants to come with us. The test is well, again. I was going to say, you guys, if we don't bring her, someone else will. Uh, Lucy already and loves Lucy me. Lucy might. The Eat fact that it's trained up in the back of this place, or chained up in the back of this place, I highly doubt anyone is using it. Every other bullet we've seen has been with a rider. You did see a rider Maybe it's because it's a good one, and not a bad one like the others. Right, I'm, Lucy? I'm sorry, we did see a rider. <gasps> Wait a second, what, the rider that was sleeping? He wasn't sleeping. That was in the he was in the barracks, right? He was in the barracks, and you heard him talking. There's sirens, pardon me. Oh my god, Siren Head. She said, guys, we, you know. That means it's trained. As you, when you whisper to it, it flinches. You can't whisper. You gotta yell at it. Yeah, okay, look. Ah! You... Lucy, come on over here. It gets back to where, like, it's You know what? Fine. I... Do you really want to take it with you right now? I told you no! I think then... we, I, we need to leave it. We need oh, to okay. leave it and then but... come back for it. Okay, but if we leave it... With you being assertive over it, it's going to pull that chain out of the wall and follow us. <laughs> I can't stop it. You, sure you can. You just need to talk to it calmly and have if, it back up. If she breaks the chains and follows us, then it's not our decision. <laughs> right, and then we have to worry about keeping her alive. If it breaks his change, it, it it's meant to be, right? Today if you love something, please. let it break its chain. I've lost exactly. this fight so many times, Zachary. I'm not doing it again. If they're going to take it, they're going to take it. You're not going to change their mind. Look, you guys already made me get rid of Dante. That's not true. Dante's at my house where I offered you to come and live. But now he's a house dog. He was always a house dog. Me. <laughs> now he's a dog with a house. We can I'll come. We can Fine. come back for at least. What would you Marla's like me to dead. do? Would, would you like... like me to talk to it very calmly so it runs away from me? I'll tell it to sit and stay. But you gotta promise we can come back and get Lucy. Look, if we all are alive, we can come back and get Lucy. <sighs> she goes and she whispers so really, like, despondently. I'm sorry, Lucy. You can't come with us right now. I don't think he can actually hear you. If you whisper, whisper. Just really softly. I'm sorry, Lucy. You can't come right now. 
have to leave you. Ah. It backs up a bit. Okay, come on, Zachary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm the bad guy now, am I? <laughs> I didn't say you were a bad guy. You get what you wanted, and now I'm just like child. Um, sometimes I did. I understand. I'm gonna open this. Well, door. not all of us get to be the god. Uh, well, quick, I didn't choose this. Real quick, Tadeus, are you uh, are you keeping your darn out? Or are you gonna pocket him again? Oh, pocket him for sure. Okay, let me do that real quick. I can just feel like Tadeus is standing up against the wall, just laughing that it's not him this time. I'm, I'm totally smiling, but I'm not chuckling. It's just like that, that that knowing smile over the situation. All right. You open the door. Tom holds Delia's hand and says, that was a dare. Hallway. Come back for her. I'm um, with Pat on sand. Well, now, ex why are we not taking her with us? Because I don't we know. Do you know how to her. ride a bullet? Do you have to ride the bullet? I mean, it's either you ride her or she's in the way. I... Hmm. She needs training first. I need to learn about her. Yeah, you don't even know what she eats. She liked rations? A dog would like rations, too. It doesn't mean it's good for them. In fact, I'm pretty sure Dante used to love rations. Did Daily ever roll a, a lore arcana check thingy for bullets? Did that ever happen? I don't know. Uh, well, would it be you? You you tell me. Would it be reasonable for her to know things about a bullet? Probably not. Okay. Well, before you is a hallway that leads to a, another T intersection. I guess you wouldn't be able to tell, but you'll see in, like, a five feet that it ends in a T. I can second. see the angle. Yeah. You know where I'm going. To the left, to the left. All right, well, you see the crevasse over here. Uh, and over there is a room. I view it as more evidence that this is always the right choice. Uh, give me a second here. Got to scroll. Uh... Water fills a rectangular marble basin in the middle of this hall. Um, and the walls display an ancient... Oh boy, I wish I looked up this word. Freeze? Fre freeze A? Does anybody know what that means? It looks like it means a mural, no. because of context clues. That circles the room. The frieze depicts woodland images of deer, bears, and game fowl, along with parties of dwarven hunters. A broad horizontal band of sculpted or painted decoration, especially on a wall near the ceiling. Aha! Uh -huh. so like mold. Gotcha. It's actually pronounced freeze. Oh, really? Okay. Yes. Oh, well, you learned something new. Uh, you can also see that the southeast corner of this room is badly damaged, and the walls there are little more than rubble. That would be uh, this area here. What's the uh, the freeze look like? Depicts woodland images of deer, bears, and game fowl, along with parties of dwarven hunters. Uh, dwarven dwarves and their hunting. I'm gonna look closer at the freeze. Okay. What are, you, are you trying to discern anything from it? Yeah, I'm trying to see if there's anything hidden in the painting. Like if there's anything like it. Just looking at it, it looks like a a happy dwarf hunt. I just want to see if there's anything else going on in it. Oh, uh, well, um, there's a there's like a scene of. Uh, 
like dwarven hunters that have like sl- bows slung on their shoulders and their uh, their prize on their over their backs, walking in a direction. Okay. You know how like what I'm what I'm trying to get at is you know how like in Curse of Strahd you see skulls and shit if you look at the murals. Is there anything weird? Oh no, this is pretty. This is pretty okay. Basic ruin, you know, ancient civilization thingy you're seeing here. Not to fuck with your mind, it's just a piece of history. Okay. So, uh, here, you can plainly hear, coming from this door, clang, 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 and then psh, it sounds like somebody's working at a, uh, crafting. a forge or something. Sounds like Tom Lair's here. Tom Lair? Tom Lair, sorry. Is it Tom Lair of that city? Yeah. Clang. Clang. What do you do? Well, I guess we should probably deal with them. Maybe they're holding that smith against his will. All right. They didn't do anything when they heard the thunder wave, so... To be fair... Those cultists that were sleeping in that side room also didn't do anything when we killed that first Boro shark. True enough. Maybe it's hard. To... Maybe you're just like living in an area where there's earthquakes and stuff. But they just suspect loud noises to be that. I mean, and with an ant keg like nest right nearby. Do the shivers. Oof. Yes. Should we have not taken care of that nest? I mean, egg kegs are natural creatures, right? They're not. It's not like they they don't belong here. I mean, they saw us go over, and they didn't run up, so they're not being controlled by anybody. It doesn't seem. I think Zachariel's right. I think that we're just in their way. I think whatever the cult is doing here is disrupting their natural habitat and causing them to run outwards. And because they're predatorial and apparently very hungry creatures, they just go after the first sign of food. Makes sense. We should check this door. Yes, I agree. Hold with the door. All right, do you uh, you open the door with the pivot thingy, and you keep hearing the clang, 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 and uh, yeah, you see two Dorgar. They just kind of look at you as you open the door. They don't move. Hum just kind of waves because she can see them both. <laughs> they both kind of look uneasy at each other as. You hear the clang, clang coming from over here, um, and it looks like they're they had some task. And then you hear, um, "What are you two doing? Get back to work!" Clang, clang. Does it sound like stone playing? <laughs> kind of does. A similar, a similar sort of uh, uh, candor, but not the same timber because I am but one man. It is. It sounds feminine. <laughs> oh. Okay. Well, they're they, not attacking. They both look at her uneasily, and they take one more look at Hum through the door, and then they just kind of keep going at their task. Should we knock? Now I'm confused. They seem to be more goal-oriented. Should we maybe go talk to them? Oh, we could try that. Zachary All right. I step through the door. Hello? The clanging stops. Uh. Actually, it stops for a second, and then you hear an annoyed yes. A forge stands in the middle of this room, surrounded by piles of firewood. Two big anvils stand close by. You actually can't see them from where you are. And other uh, 
and, and hammers, tongs, and other smithing tools are scattered around several workbenches along the chamber walls. Um, you come through a doorway. It uh, describes the entrances and stuff. Go on, sorry. Okay. Hello, I, I think we may be lost. We're looking for a friend. to ask him a question you you hear silence the door guard look to uh they look over that way and then back at you uh i'm not to, i'm not here to give directions oh that's fine um say how do you feel about the mountain the what? Who, who are you? I can't see you from oh, behind I'll, there. I'll, oh, I'm sorry. I'll step out. <laughs> so you see... Uh, let me actually bring the handout out. Because it's, there's some art attached here. Show to players. You see that? Earth-looking oh, genie with a huge hammer. Um... She says, she says, she looks you up and down, and, and then she looks back down to her anvil, and she keeps clanging away at this piece of wood, or a piece of uh, metal. She says, don't, don't touch anything. Oh, that's fine. Um, are you, what are you working on? She says, I'm working on weapons and tools. For who? For Marlos Uran Ur Urrael. Urnrael. Oh, that's a shame. She says, We have a bargain. I am paid well. I have no quarrel with you. Oh. But if you're... Have you already been paid? Clang. Clang. And she looks up. I don't see how that's any of your business. Well, I'm just saying your employer may disappear. Hmm. Good thing he's already paid me. Clang. Oh, okay. Clang. Well, we'll leave you to your work. Have fun. He, she kind of whispers to herself um, loud enough that you can hear, but it's clearly like under her breath. And uh, she sort of wipes her brow and she says, um, Unrali has not paid me to fight puny mortals. He can look after his own slaves. Then he, well, then, hang on now, just one second. And she looks up. Who said anything about mortals? You are not immortal? I am now, but I wasn't, apparently. She blinks. All right, I'll take your word for it. May I continue hey, my work? Oh, you can. Don't stop on my account. She keeps working the metal. I look at the Durgers. They just kind of uneasily continue with these minor tasks where they are. Uh, this one here, stoking, uh, yeah, this one here, stoking the forge. This one appears to be working with a smaller mechanical device. Hey, Zachariel, let's let her finish her work. I agree. Goodbye. Uh, sorry for bothering you. Mm. She just grunts. As she comes out the door and waits for Zachariel. She says, is there any way Suni could, like, block the door? Block the door? Yeah, so, like, they can't get out. I mean, I don't know if I can You did stop. see the crevasse uh, opposite her. She also didn't appear to have legs and was floating off of the ground. Oh, okay. Was it the excavators that met the genie? In the air temple, yes. In the air temple? What if she's like 
like the other genie we met where she's like stuck well she said that she was paid hmm. but didn't she say they made a deal yeah and she got paid for it but I, I imagine she's making weapons and arms for them uh, but she does she doesn't have any quarry with us so and she's Technically not in the cult if she's just working for them. That's yeah, I'm cool with that. I need to take a five minute break, guys. I was just about to say, let's call a break because I need to pee. <laughs> We're gonna call a break. There's OBS. There's OBS. Yeah, yeah. That is a really great cat picture, isn't it? <laughs> Alrighty. So you guys leave the Dao to continue her work. But now, the 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 basin here ripples a little bit, like the water ripples a little bit. Not threateningly. There's a T Rex coming. No, 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 not like something's like it, like a. Like, a like natural ripple. Uh, like there's some, like there's a current. Like there's a current. That's what I should have said. Underneath the water. Oh, that's weird. Water weird. Those are things. I hope not. not this time, as you peer at the water. And then you hear a yelp come from your south. South is left. I'm going. That better not be Lucy. No, it wasn't the, the bullet sounding uh, yelp. Um, yeah. Since we've been doing this a lot, can I throw my uh, ear to the door? Sure you can. Roll perception. Twenty-seven. Um... I'm just trying to think of what kind of... You hear uh, footsteps and muttering. Footsteps, muttering. We can take it. You ready? Ready. Right. We kick the door in? Uh, I've been yeah, bored for a little bit. I'm kicking the door in. All right, you kick the door in. I'll just... I'll, for the... the... The procedure here is I'm going to read the description of what you can see before I react with PCs or NPCs. Kick the door in. The, the door spins on its pivot. Um, before you, you see a wooden torture, cha torture rack standing in the middle of this room. Manacles hang from the walls. Uh, and fiendish hooks, blades, and clamps hang on the back wall where you can see. The, this, uh, this person turns and looks at you. Who, who the heck are you? What are you doing here? And then he... he... What did Rack expect? Or... Sorry. Nice room you've got there. And he sees, he sees Zachariel and he says, Oh no. And he says, Attack them! Roll initiative. Actually, don't roll initiative yet. I need to clear this... Not roll initiative. Why does everyone attack me when they see me? You're famous. Infamous. Alrighty. Wow. Our initiatives. Sixes and elevens. Now that you're in here, Tadias, uh, you can see over here, uh, all those tokens of dudes you see are people in cages. Uh... Four cramped iron cages stand in the room's western alcove, occupied by gaunt, dirty individuals with blank gazes. Um, let me uh, get these. This one's initiative going. Oh, I didn't roll for her yet. Uh, or what I mean is I didn't do the toggly toggle. There we go. All right, public. Yeah. Okay. Eh. Eh. 
All right, well, uh, this cultist runs at Zachriel. And uh, is going to try to run through as he looks for a uh, thing in his armor with his wicked curved blade. Uh, ineffective. Nathan. Go, oh, Nathan. Uh, get the one dude. Who? <laughs> the weird looking dude. Um, I wonder if there's a handout for this one. Probably not. Uh, w this person, uh, this is the first time you're seeing this kind of person, uh, has a similar, like, stony garb, but it looks like splint mail, and they carry, um, this, this, uh, black rod in their hand. And it looks like, it looks like it's about as dense as, like, a piece of rebar, to give you a, a modern kind of, uh, feel about it. Uh, okay, and, um, Nathan attacks, or doesn't attack, but distracts. Yep. Alrighty, Vok. We're playing that one of these things is not like the Vox, it's your turn. Um, Mark's gonna come over here and take a stab at that guy. Alright. 26. Uh, oh yeah. Oh wait, he acted, so you don't get advantage. But 18 hits. So go ahead and roll. Uh, not- you know, he needs night sneak attack as you just slice through his body and his limp form just collapses in front of Zachriel. The stone melder. Ah! What is this thing? And he's gonna swing at Nathan. Because you didn't have Nathan oh, no. go away. Nathan poofs. Nathan poofs. Uh, and they also spend a spell slot because they don't know what this thing is. So congratulations, you took away a spell slot. Uh... And then it uh, and looks at Tadias. That's their turn. Zachariel. All right. I'm gonna get right in here. All right. You get right in there. Introduce them to to Sue. Go after this guy first. As you loft Suni for an attack, that hits. Uh, you hear the the person behind you, the stone melder, say, The spade! Uh, the cultist is not dead. I hear that, and I spin around and smack her with my shield. All right. That's a guy, sorry. Him. Uh, doesn't matter, really. Uh, oh, you're probably going to do it. Yeah. Ah! She falls prone. He <laughs> falls prone. Here we go with that. Oh my god, he's dead. No, no, no. Nah, wrong thingy. Prone. All right. So I then say, the spade. That's a hit. Attack. 12. All right. Ah. Anything else? Uh, that's it for me. All right. Well, this cultist jumps on this bunk and tries to go take a wild leap and hit Zachriel. We'll see if he does it with his centaur. I don't think 13 hits. That's nice. Tadaish. I'm seeing a down mage, and I think that's just too good. We're gonna go with the, uh... That's a hit. Or 11. That's also a hit. For 11, yeah. Don't have many big guys. Yeah, so I'm just gonna just keep slashing at him, use the bonus action, and try to exploit the weakness. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Oh! Holy shit! Oh my god! Oh, you crit with Whoa. Blood Flint! You can roll the. Yep. Yes! Yes! <laughs> Let's see if you break it. Uh, that is a d20 roll, right? Where's that handout? Uh, and the magic items. I just wanna take a look at this real quick. Uh, oh, it's a D100. It is a D100, but who knows? Maybe you'll uh, 
Maybe it'll break. You stop. Nope. Uh, so that's I do right. that Uchi's and I. That oh, was so. Does the X point double or is that? It just does. One? It does. So uh, that was a big hit. I mean, you just dig this thing in, and like the blood ignites, and like this gout of flame just out, and the 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 uh, stone miller screams in pain. And I can help. I gotta add that up now. What is that? Ten plus twenty-four, thirty-four. Oh, did you what? Pretty sure it's sixty-six damage. Sixty-six. Good, sweet God. Well, I mean, with the the nine plus two and the eight plus three, so. Minus 22 would be 44. I rolled 656 on the extra dice on the fire thing, too. Yeah. Oh, wait. Plus the two hits before. Uh, yes. Unless your is off. No, this is right. Uh, okay. The God of Flame comes up and, uh, followed by nasty blood and man you just you took them out they're dead and the cultists then drop to their knees and they say please don't hurt us I'm going to kind of hold the dagger up a little bit and kind of walk towards him. All right. But they're going to tell us a lot of things. They look oh, why don't you like them to tell you everything? And I kind of put it away and walk over to these cages. Uh, okay. Let's deal with the cages. Um, so... Uh, blah, blah, blah. Where are you at? Okay. So you see um, what looks like a Black Earth Guard all garbed up in their armor without their weapon um but like the armor is shattered in places and it's clear that there are several um nasty wounds on her person the person next to her is a human uh who just is staring ahead angrily and then the uh this person here is a a woman dwarf. And then this person here is a half elf. I kind of look them all over and I quickly say, How long have you been here? Um, the. Who, who'd you ask? I just kind of asked like them all generically. The, uh, the half elven man um, is like just kind of looking at the now dead uh, stone melder person, and he looks at Tadias and he says, "Oh my goodness, we've we've I don't even know how long it's been. It seems like it's been in it seems like one day has dragged on for weeks." And then uh, the black earth guard up here. Shots off. Oh, they've been here for two weeks now. I've been well, here for a day. Have you seen any more of the complex? Uh, they, uh, the three here, uh, below the Black Earth Guard, below in terms of the, um, uh, what word am I looking for? The, uh, map um they all sort of shake their heads actually uh, except for the one who looks catatonic which is this one um and uh the uh black earth guard woman says uh i've been all over i can lead you anywhere you want you're going to be useful all right i'm going to free all of you stay close to us and stay safe all right i don't know if nice. Yes. That woman is one of them. She's also in a cage. She spits. Pfft, not anymore. I'm tired of their... I'm tired of their... Or I'm tired of the priests here and their 
nonsense. Can I incite that for sincerity? You can. 100% sincere. Very what angry. Fine. What a fine, Zachariel. And I trust your judgment. So while that's happening, let's go back to Hum. How about these two here? Tell me why you're on your knees. You just were hitting at us. Uh, it, uh, it was because of, of, of Heldorm. And they gesture to the dead stone melder. What, that pushover? They, their eyes kind of widen as you say that. You, you haven't been at the end of her... Or, sorry, you haven't been at the... Oh, no. Um, you haven't been strung up by him before. Have you? Uh, almost. The, the other one shakes, or nods his head. He was torturing any gestures over to everyone in cages. Seems like you were helping. And one of them, like, kind of... You, you see, like, one of them kind of, like, chokes a sob and says, They're going to kill us. Let's just get a word from the... Uh, that's a 17. Um, Does he seem sincere? I he mean, seems he seems sincere. Where are you from? Uh, they say... Um, Wait, give me a second. Uh, uh, I'm I'm from Rollid originally. You're from Rollid. And another one says, uh, "I was around um, Riverend." Riverend. What made I, you join the cult? I would have figured the water cult would have been, made more sense, but. Why did you join a cult anyway? <laughs> Says, uh, we didn't really want to. The man yeah. with the the mud powers brought us here. Mirage? Is that his name? He's kind of a you dick. You went with a guy and you didn't know his name. He says, no, no. He... They both kind of heave and they say, Mirage took us from our our homes at, at, at um... Mirage took us from our homes, at least our hometowns. How long have you been working with the cult? And, um, the Black Earth Guard, um, says, They've been here about three weeks, three ten days now. And do you intend on continuing with the cult, or are you done? They look at each other. They say, I want to go home. Okay. What can you tell us right now about this cult? Where's Marlo? I can tell you that, says the Black Earth Guard. I appreciate you. I'm talking to the gentleman. I'll be right with you, I promise. Mm -mm. She grunts and kind of glares at Hum. And they say, um, Marlos is, uh, and they kind of look at the door behind you. Um, and then they kind of, they kind of point, uh, let me get a, my pointer. <laughs> uh, they point like this way, and then they sort of extend their arms more as if to gesture, like, further, uh, uh, quote-unquote, north. Uh, past all the rooms up there, I think. They didn't really let us in, one of them says. He, uh, we only saw him coming out of what we think are his chambers. Okay, well... Zachariel, I know you feel when they're ready to go that they don't die, so. No, these, these two can live. 
And I go over and I apologize to the stone guard and tell her, I'm sorry. I needed to make sure that they really were willing to give up parts of the cult. Can you go through walls, Vox? It appeared I did. I didn't mean to go that fast over That's there. That's fine. I just want to check and make sure dynamic lighting's working. Restrict movement was not enabled. Oh, okay. Oh my god, she's it. a wall shifter. That explains it. <laughs> well, you guys are well behaved. Nope, no, I can't. All right, so... Uh... So I apologized to the stone guard so that she understood what my... why I was doing what I... I guess that makes sense. Hmm. Can you get me out of here? It's cramped. Let's get you out of there. It looks cramped. Yeah. I'm gonna bust out the crowbar and I start smashing. All right. Uh, it takes it takes some doing, but eventually you get all the cages open. Um, and uh, I'm the... really concerned about the woman that's catatonic. Yeah. Or the person that's catatonic. Uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, um. Oh, that is a woman token, isn't it? Okay, we'll say that that's a, a lady. Um, the Vikarth guard pops out and like rocks her head, and she says, "Ah, my name's Orna." Orna Amham. Name is Tadais. Good to meet you. Mm. And then uh, Orna just uh, walks over to the wall and leans. As you, you can call me Zaman Rule. All right. Hi, Delia. Orna, what can you tell us about Marlos? Uh, he's a. He's an egoist of the highest order. Are you about to fight him? I hope so. Well, we'll be confronting him. Probably going to fight him. Probably going to fight him, yeah. Oh, don't look in his eyes. Whatever you do, don't look in his eyes. That's cryptic. He turns people to stone. She says. Oh. Not good looking out. Yeah, he liked to do it to a couple of... Uh, I was actually on the block for that. But... Uh, a hair dorm, hell dorm over there got first dibs. Hey, can you tell me why she's so interested in my shovel? Is that that shovel they keep talking about? Yeah, that's the the shovel. Has like a spirit of a powerful earth elemental. Yep. They probably want to destroy it. Oh, that's bad. I don't know. I just can't. I just joined up so I could get some coin, fight some dudes, but they have me worshiping earth. I got really irritated with the priest and I struck him and that's why you see me in that cage. Or saw me in that cage. So they punish people by either torturing them or turning them into stone. She shrugs. Wait, hang on now. You, you're telling me that you joined for coin? You joined to, to fight innocent civilians for coin? If you pay me to strike... I'll do it. Why don't you just become a mercenary? That's what I thought I was doing. Then I got wrapped up no, in all of this. No, you joined an evil death cult. I, I can see that now. Thank you. Oh, hi. I'm Zachary Vitalis. I'm uh, Didn't you say your name was Zaman Rule? A veteran way shield. What's a way shield? A mercenary group. Oh. Pay good? Oh yeah, I came down here from Gal. Work. I came down here from Galtana, and then the uh, half elf here pipes up and says, "Oh, that's where we're from. We were, we were, uh, we were traveling through the mountains, and we were ambushed. That's how we ended up here." I see. Uh, give me a second, says Orna, as she walks over this way. 
she says, I wonder if my... Ah, uh, here we go. And she reaches under the bunk and uh, pulls out her uh, club thingy that you see all the Black Earth Guards using. There's a, some other stuff under this bunk, too, if uh, you... I think it might belong to them. I'm going to use this time to go check out this scorched priest guy and see if he has anything on him. Yeah. Uh, let me see here. Um, you find a set of keys. I assume they went to the cages, so I laugh a little bit and put them in my pocket. Do you, do you look to um, where... Do you, well, Real quick. Do you look to where Orno is gesturing to? Oh, I was just doing this while they were talking. Oh, okay. What is Hum doing? Hum has been working on this this human woman. She's tried care wounds on her to see if that could help the heal wounds, her just a little. The wounds clear up, heal up completely, but uh, still looking catatonic. Everyone else here is also covered in scabs and wounds of of sorts. Does anyone know what happened to to her? The um, half elf uh, kind of looks just a really dark expression, and he says, "You don't really want to know." I'm gonna look under the bed. You see a uh, chest with a lock. Pull the chest out. Hey, Jedi, so is there a key on that person? I chuck him some keys. I'm going to try some keys. As you're trying some keys, do you want to do any more with your scene, Hum? With the catatonic woman? And the other prisoners? I'm just talking to her softly, hoping that she'll at least look at me. Okay. Roll a, uh, roll a, um... Either straight charisma or persuasion, whichever you think makes most sense. There's not a skill for, like, that's specifically for, like, comforting, you know? Um, so, uh, I'll tell you the result of that after. Uh, Zachariel, you try some keys, one key works, you pop it open, you see a bunch of cool stuff. Um, you find... Uh, this much coin, 230 silver, and a pouch of these gemstones worth 10 gold each. You find a uh, set of studded leather and a longsword, and a bundle of arrows. Hey, does any of this belong to you people? Uh, uh, uh yes, um, uh, he says, he, he gestures to, uh, his his dwarven ally, um, and says, uh, they destroyed her plates, but they took my, for some reason, they took my leather armor and my longsword and my arrows. You can have those arrows. No, you... no, 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 no. You're going to need this to help yourselves. He... We don't need your weapons. You need them more than we do. He slowly walks over. Probably right. And he uh, starts donning his leathers. Um, the woman. Uh, yeah, we're going to say it's a woman. Uh, as Hum is talking softly, uh, she just kind of leans toward her. And then, like, just kind of. Puts... Hum, is... Go on. Hum is saying to her. I need you to be here with us right now. It's the only way we're going to get you out of here. You can't stay locked up in your own head. You'll be in too much danger. Come back. Let's get you out of here. Slowly, she nods. What's your name? Uh, give me a second. I'm going to change a couple of things here. Just so for my benefit for uh, referring to characters. Uh, 
She says, um, in a low, in a, in a quiet whisper, My name is Dareday. Dareday, you stay next to me and I'll protect you. Okay. All right, um, Tadias, could I have a word with you? Or not. All right. Or not, it's just kind of like moving around or just, you know, testing the weight of her uh, thing. Do you trust this or not, person? I trust that she's angry and that she's going to be useful as long as she remains angry. Do you think she's more useful here with us or perhaps I could persuade her for gold to escort these people out? <laughs> Hum walks up to Zachariel and to Dias and she says, I don't really trust this award. It's a backtrack, yes, but it might be safer for them to come with us. The carts and everything else. The Ankeg. I don't know if she can handle all of it. And Derda is pretty weak right now. She's very fragile. So are we abandoning our mission here then? No, we'll put us forward. It's just they will have to tag along behind us. We're clearly path, that's all it is. It's going to be hard for us to focus on the fight when we're worrying about... We've done this before. We find a place that we can stash them away. Like here? But here is the gap. best place. Do we know if more will come? Well, they have arms. Uh, as long as they rest a little bit, they could probably hold off. It One of those minutes. bullets comes by and they are all dead. Have you seen another bullet? Yes, literally we walked past it right now. You didn't let them take it. Have you seen another like, like hey fighting fit bullet? Hey guys, listen. We have two cultists that they believe are on their side right now standing in here. It would be easy for them to pretend that they're still doing what they need to do. We just stuff this monster under the bed and they can pretend if somebody comes. They can blockade this door so nobody can get in. There's not another door in here. They'll be fine. We can come back for them. What are you guys talking about over there? Oh, we're just planning Strategy. on how we're going to rip off Marlos's head. I like the way you talk. Orna, ah. you seem like a battle-wise person. What would be your strategy right now with all of these individuals who have been injured? She scratches her head. I'm no good at protecting innocence. Uh, I mean, she kicks uh, Heldorm's uh, body and says, uh, Eldorm is usually only expecting people to be brought in to be questioned. So unless you get taken down and they try to bring you here, I don't think anyone's going to check on him. And the, uh, the not cultists say, uh, that's pretty much it, yeah. No one really came in here other than to deliver captives. When's the last time captives were delivered? They gesture to... Oh, no, actually, they, they gesture to Orna. Okay. Orna, what did you do to piss off your cult buddies? I slapped a priest. Right in his smug face. I like you. She nods appreciatively. So, I don't look, like your life choices, but... 
So look, we're trying to figure out what we should do. If you go with us, it'll be dangerous. You could be killed. If you stay here and you hold up and you blockade yourself in, we can come back for you. I like that option, says uh, this cultist here. And the uh, half-elf kind of walks up and says, uh, I have to agree. We can probably move the uh, the rack in front of the door. As long as they're safe. Aona. Hey, yeah. How would you like a uh, a mission? She cocks her eyebrow. Think of it as like a like a job. How much do they pay you in the gold? Silver a day. Tell you what. You keep these people alive, and when we come back, I'll give you ten gold and give you if you wish to join the Way Shields, I'll give you my approval. Her eyes go wide when you say ten gold. I'll do it. That's more that's that's a month of pay. That's more than a month of pay. He says, uh, right. or she, she walks over to the uh, uh, rack and says, give me a hand with this. And I start, like, inching it. Hum goes back to Deirdre and she says, I have to leave you here so you can be safe. But I need you to stay with us. Find a place where you're comfortable and just stay there till I come back. The uh, woman dwarf, who is this person here, finally pipes up. And says, I'll, I'll protect her. Thank you. I appreciate that. We will be back for you. Thank you. You have my solemn promise. Does that w- female dwarf have a weapon anymore? Didn't they take her? They're unarmed. What's what? underneath the beds? You said there were other weapons under the bed? It was the longsword and the leathers and uh, these arrows. And what about under this bed? Uh, it's, there's nothing there. Hum hands over her rep here to this dwarf. Uh, thank you. Was there anything special about the arrows, or just plain arrows? They. I they, thought they were his. They are his. Um, but, I mean, looking at them as he's kind of like inspecting them, they have a uh, arrowhead that looks like it's glowing with the green light. Fox is intrigued. She's going to go over and investigate. He notices you coming. Hello? Those are different arrows. Might I inquire what they are? He says uh, they're enchanted. When they strike a creature, a uh, gout of green flame leaps to another creature nearby if there is one. I offered them, but uh, your friend over there uh, told me to keep them, and that's wise in a way, but... He looks at Tadias. He shrugs, and then he puts him in the uh, quiver. Then he holsters it on his back. I'll be ready if... uh, our barricade breaks. And if you can get us safe on the road, I'll give them to you. You looked interested. Sounds like a deal. Smiles. All right, so we'd be off. Although, may I... Take one or two. Try them out. Uh, he he smiles a bit and he says, "Sure, here." He hands you one. Thank you. You said your name was Vox. 
Yes, and your name? I'm Gorver. And he goes to shake your hand. Grover? Uh, Gervor. G-E-R-V-O-R. And uh, he explained how these arrows work, so I'm just going to show you the item card. Bah! On a hit with uh, these magic arrows, it deals an additional 1d4 fire to the target. The creature, If there's a creature within 5 feet of the target, the green flame leaps out and strikes the other creature for 1d6, or 2d6. Okay, are we ready to move on? I think these guys have something in. And I believe we have Orna's loyalty. Uh, she she looks at you, and then she gestures to Zachriel, and she says, uh, he's got my paycheck. That is the mercenary way. Good enough for me. I mean, 10 gold or get killed. Pretty simple choice. Right. You hear a grinding sound as they are pushing the rack toward the door. Oh, before we leave, ah. when we come back, we'll send a little blue dragonfly in to let you know it's up. Okay. That's okay, right, today? It's fine. Or how about a secret knock? It's a stone door. Uh, you can hit it with a weapon. It'll probably ring through. I know I've done it. Right. We'll figure something out. I'm sure you you can hear us from the other side. She says, I mean, this is too complicated. Just, just, Knock three times or something with the I agree. metal rock. Yep. There, there you go. go. <laughs> Let's try it. Close the door and I'll we'll, knock. Giants. We'll knock two times on the top of the door and once on the bottom. Sure. And everyone else murmurs their agreement. And uh, you you hear some grinding for a while, and then it stops. And it's probably that they got the uh, rack in place. I can't move that picture, so you'll just have to imagine it. Imagination. Nope, I can't move it. I almost moved the entire map. <laughs> God's angry. No, God's angry. The world doesn't make sense. All right, what are you guys doing? We knock on the doors to make sure they can hear us. Oh, yeah, it works. Okay. Like, I'm sure Zachariel can just take the blunt end of Sunni's spade and go whack, whack. Whack, and then it'll work. That's what I imagine. I wouldn't want to hurt Sunni. You, you've I hit. Joking. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, what are you doing now? It's getting close to time, but I don't know. It depends on. We'll see if we can leave off on an exciting note. I don't know. Where are you going? Didn't they say Marlos was up further this direction? Yeah, they gestured that way. But what's the store here? Ooh, a castle. You don't know. We should be through it, all the same. You hear anything, Hum? Hum presses her ear against the door. Roll perception. Uh, you don't hear much. 
I don't hear much. But that's because you got to press your ear up like this. <laughs> Go ahead and roll. You don't hear much more than Hum does. Hmm. Seems like maybe there's nothing there unless you want to open the door. Why don't you go right ahead? Oh, I will. Opens the door. All right. You open the door and you see what do you see. Oh, God. That's not what I wanted to do. Okay. Uh, you open the door and uh, you see a couple of large creatures on top of sleep rolls and another large creature standing. Ogres. And it turns, this one, oops, this one turns and looks at you. And kind of like grabs its huge club. It's not moving towards us? Nope, it just looks like it's ready for you to enter. I'm going to close the door. All right, you close the door. That was a lot more than not much. Yeah, um... Can I even fit through the door? That's my question. I'm gonna step away from the door. You hear... Uh, actually, you don't hear anything. Never mind. Should we just leave them be? Or take them out? Uh, I don't know. I mean, they seem to be sleeping. I don't know that... No, they, they saw like they were Earth called. One saw us. Clang, clang, because you, you still hear the, the workshop over here. <laughs> I don't know if the ogres are actually... Picking fights with the ogres does not sound fun. It really doesn't. We should probably save uh, strength for the fight ahead. Agreed. Although, <laughs> if they come out the door... I don't think they can fit through that door. Huh? They, 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 they can. You, you can kind of into it. So, like, I gotta remind you guys that the tokens don't actually fill the space. It's just like the space it controls, quote unquote. And what your characters see is that if the ogre wanted to, it could squeeze through. It'd be okay, a tough. So... It'd be a tough sell. Or it would be really tough for it, but it could squeeze through. I mean, how else did it get in here? Can I just crack open the door again? Okay. I want to see if it's headed toward the door. It's closer. And then it notices... Okay, I'm going to shut the door. Okay. It's coming. And I'm just holding onto my short sword. Okay, I guess we have no choice. I mean, we could just, just run. stands behind the guy. Well, yeah, ogres aren't very smart, right? We could probably just oh, walk gonna gonna suck. hide in the hallway, maybe. Hope it doesn't come out. Stand around the corner where it can't see us. Hey, Mike, is this this like water basin? Uh, what did you say, um, Justin? Is the water basin raised off the ground or set in? Uh, it's raised. It's about it's about two feet off the ground. You could just hide on the other side of that. I mean, I have no problem hiding behind that, but it's been a it's been a good moment, and there's no ogre trying to come through the door. You know what? I think we're good. Yeah, let's move fast. If we're not there when he opens the door, he can't see. Alright. 
Well, uh... Door here. You can intuit that that probably leads to the workshop you're just in. Because we can hear the clanging? You can hear the clanging. And it shares the same sort of wall. There's an arrow slit here. Uh, give me a second. Mm -hmm. uh... Yeah, okay. Um, you're at this T intersection. What do you do? Well, first we want to look through the arrow slit. Well, first, I want to peek my head around the corners. Uh, okay, go ahead and peek your head around the corners and hum. You want to look into the arrow slit? Well, I'll let Vox look around the corner. You can see the edge of the crevasse over here. And this way, you see a platform and some stairs. Nobody. You can... We can look through this slit now. I see guys. You see guys sleeping. And you see um, a table. Uh, with, it looks like there are cultists there, um, looks like they're eating, like, some kind of gruel. They don't seem to have noticed mm. you. Hmm. Best I whisper over at Box. I will whisper over at Box. <laughs> I didn't hear what you whispered to Box. Look. Hmm. I run back to Zach Rail and I say there's five in this room over here, sleeping and eating. Okay. Um, do you see a way in, or do you want to bypass them? There's a door, but it's on the west side. Oh, there's one on the east side. There's one on the east side. Towards the top of the room. What do you want to do? I would say let's bypass it if we're not going to go by the doors. If we're going to take left, which I know is... Tadias's favorite way to go. We can bypass these guys all together. They may never figure out that we're Yeah, there is a left turn right here. There is a left turn right here. Tadias, you see this? Are you muted? Yes. <laughs> He's just giving that kind of look into the back of their heads as they keep talking about him, trying to ignore them. Uh... Okay, you're going left. Is this like kind of the same deal as when we cross that kind of bridge? Not, what do you mean the same deal? With those, uh, those things hanging from the ceiling that came down. Oh, um... You look up, you don't really see any, uh, you don't see any statues of stone creatures. A great chasm opens up before you, its ceiling 30 feet overhead. In the middle of the chasm is a square pillar of black rock with marble top. The stone, a stone bridge leads to a staircase that wraps around the pillar. The chasm, the staircase, and the pillar descend into darkness. Ominous. What do you do? Ow. I cracked my jaw. 
I just had a thought. It's true. If it's true what the uh, the woman said. The, are you so? Are you talking? Um, are you talking in front of the arrow slit? Uh, like whispering to. Okay. To pe My back is to the arrow slit. Okay. Keep going. I'm not like shouting. Sure, sure. Keep going. I just had a thought. It's, if it's true that nobody goes to visit her or him, sorry, the the uh, torture master. Suppose they may be curious if he doesn't come eat. I don't think so. We know what we have to get done. Let's just go find this guy. All right, I'm just worried about uh, the way out. I think if we chop off the head of the snake, so to speak, it might be easier to deal with right. the aftermath. Well, do we think it's this way? They said, like, further north, right? They did. We should go the direction they told us before we go down, at least. Okay. Hum grabs Tadias' pant leg so he doesn't go left. <laughs> he begins to go left. She's got a hold of his pant leg. No, come with us. Oh, hold on, is this gonna be? Is this about to be an athletics contest? You um, know it. Okay, athletics no. contest. Here we go. You don't have a seventeen. Baby. Seventeen versus yeah. Hums. Hum keeps him in oh place. Oh my god! <laughs> well, she's got a hold of his whole leg now. But. But this is the wrong way. Shh. It's the wrong way, Hum. Shh, I know. Fight your instincts. Come with me. This is the wrong way. Shh. Wait, wait. There's guys in that room. Did you hear that? You hear Did I it? stand here? <laughs> and face me. <laughs> now go left. Did you hear that? And you hear shuffling in the room. Great. And with that, we will continue next week. Bye, Joy. Bye, Joy. Bye, Joy. Bye, Joy. Bye, Joy. Good night, Joy.